Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about Hashimoto's thyroiditis and different metabolic conditions that can impact Hashimoto's or how Hashimoto's can impact these metabolic conditions. Okay, so let's get into it. So when we look at thyroid hormones, thyroid hormones are responsible for our metabolic rate, right? It speeds things up, slows things down. If you have thyroid dysfunction, things like dysbiosis can occur, right? Because it slows things down. And then if you slow things down, the gut microbiome can change, right? You might have an imbalance or an overgrowth of things that should not be there. Or dysbiosis can occur because of uh, birth control pills, abnormal stress, or even um, antibiotics, right? So dysbiosis can impact Hashimoto's and Hashimoto's can impact dysbiosis. And this is going to be re the recurring theme, right? One of these things can impact th thyroid and thyroid can impact these metabolic conditions. The other one is intestinal permeability. When you have long-standing issues with, let's say, food sensitivity, antibiotics, you can develop gaps in these microvilli junctions where large food protein can cross into the bloodstream and create inflammation, inflammation impacting thyroid, and thyroid impacting inflammation, causing more problems with autoimmune disease. Another thing is loss of tolerance. So when patients come in and they're trying to figure out what's going on with them, and they're eliminating foods uh, for a long period of time, they tend to lose oral tolerance. So things that they should be able to tolerate, they can no longer tolerate because the body just rejects it, right? They come in, they're on eight, 10 types of foods, and you eat anything outside of that, I feel so bad. You have to be able to develop oral tolerance again, be able to absorb these foods, correct the dysbiosis and intestinal permeability, right? It can be as simple as maybe using a vegetable mash where you use different types of vegetables for the, for the fiber um, and, and, and create a more diverse microbiome. Another thing is slow, low stomach acid. Low stomach acid can occur because of Hashimoto's, but it can also be, uh, occur because of age. As we get older, we deplete uh, or we don't produce enough uh, hydrochloric acid. Another thing that can create low stomach acid is H. pylori infections or Helicobacter pylori infections. So you have to look at infectious processes, age, and so forth. Stomach acid is very important because you have to be able to break down all your carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. If you don't break these foods down to its small components and make it usable, you're going to create malabsorption or you're going to deplete your nutrition and you don't even know it being excreted out. Another thing is gastric symptoms. You can have issues with digestion, reflux signs, and those types of things. And the last one here, is SIBO, or small intestinal uh, bowel overgrowth or bacterial overgrowth. This is when bacteria from the large intestine could sneak into the small intestine where it should not be, and then creates more gases and bloating. The typical example is a female who comes in, they go, you know, Dr. Sung, I wake up in the morning and my stomach is flat in the morning. However, as I eat, my stomach starts to bloat and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And by evening, I feel like I'm pregnant, four or five months pregnant. I can't zip up my pants or button my pants. This is a very common theme with SIBO, okay? Another thing is slug sluggish gallbladder. See this time and time again, right? You have issues digesting fats, right? Sometimes I see patients uh, who come in and they've had their gallbladder completely removed because of gallbladder dysfunction or stones or sluggishness, and it's creating some symptoms. They re don't realize that the Hashimoto's can be creating that sluggish gallbladder, okay? Another thing is hypoglycemia and insulin resistance. Fluctuating blood sugars, up and down, too low, too high, can impact inflammation and insulin surges. Insulin surge is basically you eat a large a meal, insulin goes up, tries to break it down and take the sugar into the cell. This insulin surge was followed by cortisol and stress, right? And inflammation. 
So inflammatory process can occur actually with insulin surges and hypoglycemia. Another is adrenal dysfunction. All, anything and everything can affect stress levels in our, in our, in our system, right? Uh, family life, school work, study, lack of sleep, right? COVID-19. Right? The adrenals have a certain amount that it can produce and over time it gets depleted and the adrenal dysfunction can occur. Adrenal dysfunction is not in terms of just adrenal quote-unquote fatigue, but dysfunction. Producing adrenal hormones at the wrong time of day can also occur because of stress patterns, sleep patterns, and so forth. Another thing is hormonal shifts. Perimenopause, andropause. Andropause is for men, perimenopause for women. When you have this hormonal shift, it can occur, right? A lot of people don't really know about andropause, but what it is is testosterone drops in men and they go through the midlife crisis, right? They start doing things that they shouldn't do and buying cars and so forth. Um, they are doing things because there is a lack of hormones or sh shift in hormones and it, it changes their mood and so forth, right? But it can also impact Hashimoto's. Another one is electrolyte imbalances. What patients don't realize is that these uh, hormone changes or cortisol changes or sex hormone changes will impact another hormone called aldosterone. And aldosterone is, re is responsible for mineral balance and urination and those types of things, right? And it can create an imbalance in your minerals. And it can create issues in, in terms of just maybe relaxation because you don't have enough magnesium or potassium and those types of things. So it's important to look at the metabolic functions of patients and see how that's impacting Hashimoto's or sit, ask the question, is Hashimoto's impacting these metabolic conditions, right? It goes, it's an interplay. It's not just one thing or another. It, they play together and you have to figure out where to pinpoint your therapies so the patient can improve in a more global fashion, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.